Hello and welcome to Hardcore Crappie Fishing. We're back, and this time, well, these guys are a little cranky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're talking crankbaits, lots of crankbaits, different styles, a couple of uh, different companies that, uh, that we're using crankbaits that we use probably the most. And, um, and so uh, Lance is going to chip in and he is going to keep everyone straight and narrow because he does not uh, really use crankbaits that much. No, he's going to talk about it in, in the fact of not doing it, so he'll have some questions that people who that don't you know, pull crankbaits would know about. So, and, and if we wait long enough, Greg will have hooks in the sand. No, so, I just want you know, this. I got to we'll, show you the difference there. Well, I just right. had to get that one out. So I was gonna say we'll be taking hooks out of someone's hands. There you go. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll we'll start with Peyton because Peyton, you're right across from me. So. Yeah, you pull the cranks. And actually, one of the first articles I think I wrote about you was about pulling crankbaits, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. And you were in your BC. Ask. Bass cat. Bass cat. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I That's mean, before how I, long? That was before I even met Greg. How cool. long ago was that? You hadn't gotten any. What? 2007? Yeah. 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 It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been like 08, 09, I think. 08, 09? Maybe. So, you've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Uh, tell us how uh, you're doing it in the boat that you have now. Well, so now yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing. The same set, because after, well, then I just used my uh, T-bars from Driftmaster uh -huh. up front. It was the same ones I was using for spider rigging. Mm -hmm. All right. And I would just turn them more sideways. So I still right. had poles up in front. And I would troll, uh, you know, you don't have to have all these poles. You can have your old bait <laughs> bait casters and your whatever, you know, your old spinning rods. You can, and right. I, I just used what I had. And uh, I was pulling Archie Crank baits at that time. And then uh, later on, and I, we were, I was catching them really good too. I mean, you know, even with the, the small amount of knowledge I had, right. fishing was good. And it was a fun way to catch them. It was an easy yeah. way to catch them once you figured out where you need to pull and what you need to pull over. Then I met Greg, and my world kind of really expanded then. So then I, he's got his set up with uh, where your customers can sit up front and look towards the back of the boat and the rod holders are uh, right there in front of them. And then I started trolling 18 footers and 16 footers and 14 footers. Next thing I know I'm trolling uh, 10 crankbaits at a time. So then the obsession started. Now I've got five or six big old B&B bait boxes and hundreds of crankbaits. So it's an addiction, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Let's, start, let's talk stuff. about the poles. So I use B and M. B and M. That's all I use. Um, PTS power trollers. Yeah, trolls. power trollers. Mm -hmm. um, I use. I even uh, what's a they make a I think a five footer, too, and it's a pro staff trolling rod because I don't think they make the big ones. They make an eight foot. Yeah, they make an eight yeah, foot. But I use a five footer too, uh, <clears throat> and uh, I use a ten pound test. I usually use a, a clear line. Uh, usually vicious. Is what I get. I get a big spool of it. That's all. You don't need a whole lot. Like uh, mono? Yeah. I just really? use, yeah, I use 10 pound mono. And uh, I put a swivel, a snap swivel at the top of my uh, eyelet here just to keep from it, it tangling up and swirling. Yeah. And so. Not a, not a swivel snap. Yeah. But you're talking just a snap. Just a snap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah just a snap. And but Do you use the snap just for... To that way you can change it out quicker and easier well, as well. It's got two, yeah, that, but it's got two purposes. It just it helps with. But yours is a swivel. Yeah, I, I, I use it sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I use. Well, I was just using a swivel snap, then I got with you, and you just use a snap. Yeah. So that's fine. So that's what I'm saying. You know, the sponge thing, remember we talked about before. Right. So you learn things from other people. Yeah. So because Greg was always known to be the crankbait king. Uh -huh. So he always whipped their butts. So, every bit of knowledge I could suck out of him, I did. And so, yeah. And so, uh, instead of pulling crankbaits, mm -hmm. you just keep plowing through keep plowing. spider rigging. Yeah, heavier weight. But, yeah. but you've gone, I've gone, gone. I, I, yeah. I did it 
before several years ago. Right. You know, pulling crane days too. That was kind of the same setup as he would do it. Uh -huh. You know, sitting up front, poles faced out this way. I'd have a 14 foot PST. Have a I think it was a, what was it, a 10 foot PSD, and then I would have like a little 6 foot or, or 8 foot. Just like a 4 foot separation, I think, you know. Uh -huh. And had line counters and had the, it was, I mean, the years I did it, it was good, and then it kind of fizzled on me. I just, I lost my confidence in it. Right. I started going back to mentor rigging, and that's what I just stayed with the mentor rigging. But I would go with, with Greg and Peyton and you know, I remember we went a couple of years ago. You got like a nine pounder right out there. Yeah, right out. We kind of we kind of learned about it, right? Right, into just a little bit past that dog. It's like well, the fight was on. on. Yeah, that was fun. But yeah, we we but yeah, that was just fun. That it was, was a, it was a fun bad. trip. Yeah, let the sucker back too. But yeah, it was a it's it's fun. I don't like it. It's it's just sit there. I don't think I even touched a fish. Damn. I don't think he even touched a fish that day. Cause he sat back there and took the fish off. We just sat up there and took yeah. it easy. And caught, caught them. And it's well, funny how the, if the heavier person on one side, the bite will be different. But, uh, but over you, here, you, sometimes the lighter person <laughs> be catching all the fish, and sometimes the heavier person be catching all the fish. But, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was. Uh, I learned. I learned the hook set. Cause don't like actually. Yeah, I, kept, I remember you. I kept doing that. I kept doing that. I kept losing them. You lose them every so, time. You, know, you have to. You know, we didn't come to the hooks. Yeah, well, Greg, Greg, you're next because you have you have eight crankbaits just drilling to uh, yeah. well, piece, I mean, be put out. So just a, just a, the variety of some of the colors that I have. All right. Uh, out of the probably. 10, 12 boxes of right. baits that I do have. So are you using the same gear as Peyton's uh, using pretty much? Yeah, I, I, I like uh, basically, basically uh, what I like is when I'm pulling the crankbait, I like four feet difference uh -huh. in, in rod tip. All right. And then when I run the baits, I like, uh, I like about 10 foot, five to 10 foot difference in length uh -huh. uh, to help keep them from getting tangled and in that way too you know you, you always know where your baits are at as far as in depth so like 75 now, foot line 55 feet line 65 feet yeah line. yeah i usually this time of year in the beginning of the year Shallow. i'll start out at, like on one side i'll run 30 40 50 mm -hmm. 60 and the other side, I'll do 35, 45, 55, 65. So it just, that way I can determine which depth is going to be the most productive. Right. But even though I find a good depth, I don't, I may match the sides to the same depth, but I don't run multiple poles at the same depth. Because if you get them all the same depth and you go make a turn, <laughs> you got a tangled up mess. So that's what it is now. And do you use any weighted line? Uh, no, I use mono. I use any. ten pound mono. It don't matter. I mean, normally I use P line for um, for it. Yeah, because yeah, you have a lot of green line. The biggest drawback, the biggest drawback to P line, is it will twist worse than anything out there. It doesn't have as much memory and stuff. And uh, it will twist up pretty bad. Uh, so if I don't use P line, I, I don't even care if it's high vis. It's just just ten pound line, whether it's vicious or whatever. Oh. And so, uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah. I don't like braid on. Uh, the only thing I do use braid on is live scope, and otherwise, I don't like braid period on yeah. crank baits. I mean, because if you if you get hung up. And you're you're at the back of the boat. If I'm at the back of the boat, I don't ever stop the boat. Right. So if I'm at the back of the boat getting a fish in, or untangling lines, or whatever it might be, and one of the other rods get hung, that that mono will either break, or it's got enough stretch to it to where I don't have to worry about. It. I mean, I had I've tried break before. Right. And I've had them get hung, and it, it just, I've had it even bend the rod, I mean, turn the rod holder. Right. And, and you know, vibrate the pole. So I, I quit using the braid 
right. on the trolling for sure. Well, but tell us about I, the colors while I go get. I use, while I go get my pole. If I have, <laughs> that thing, you know, if I have uh, eight poles out, I have eight different colors. So I, you know, and I run them all from bright to naturals, just whatever the watercolor is, and that sort of thing. And then as we start catching fish, I let the fish. If you'll notice some of these are more worn out yeah. from the hooks, I will pick that bait up and use it before I'll pick up a new one. Brown, yeah. I, I just like the more worn uh, out. But yeah. a lot of people, when they throw too, when they throw them out the side of the boat like we are doing, they will also have their longest line for the boat, right, right next to the boat. And I mean, I mean, not the longest, the shortest line. And I'm the opposite. I run my 18th, the shortest line on my 18th footer, and my longest one's on the one shortest pole going to the back of the boat. Right. And the reason for that, that on my theory, is as you spook fish, and if they're if they're right. spookable fish with tow motor or whatever. And they go, it's just like spider rig, and they go out, and they'll hit that outside pole. And that's if that, my long pole, and that's the shortest distance. So they're going to come near hitting that one quicker than they would be invited right. by the boat. Uh -huh. So, and uh, I very rarely do I ever run faster than two miles an hour. And you don't use planter board, so I see I got to no, leave again. No, I got there you go. I don't. See, and I like running two miles an hour. I like going a little faster. So, that's my thing. I like feeling that breeze and it's hot usually. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I like to speed up, but I, most yeah. of the time I hardly ever go with two, two miles an hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what's some of your go-to colors? Which ones my favorite favorite one? My favorite colors, some of my more favorite colors is... Yeah, uh, testing. Remember, he's colorblind. Yeah. yeah. He's got, he got film. Yeah. I got <laughs> film with the color. I got, I got braille on him. I like, uh, I like the uh, pink. Pink. Uh, I got a black, I I got a black and pink one that I use a lot. Uh, That's what last year used, really. Man, that or plank, it, or was a humble, humblebee you used catching them. Humblebee was yeah. just, I mean, that thing was, I don't have it with me tonight. Mm. It's become solid black. So my it. main colors that I use the most is the humblebee. The, it used to be bubblegum, but bubble it's just gum. new black and pink. Mm -hmm. And then there's a jack-o'-lantern. Yeah, the yeah. bone whites are true, like this, is one of my favorites. Uh, chrome, the chrome. Blue chrome, or blue chrome or clown. That's a clown. Uh, those are really good. And I like the uh, avocado, which I quit making in this size of bait. Mm -hmm. And I like it real well. And then there's a couple others that I like real well that's not being made anymore. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And uh, there's another. There's a solid. I've got a solid black with kind of a yellowish green dots on it that I really like. And old Fever. Huh? That was Old Fever, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. Fever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Solid black with them green. You find them on eBay, buy them. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a few of them. Yeah. So, so I do uh, kind of the same thing, do some trolling. Sometimes I push some a little bit. Instead of pushing, I call it pulling weighted ones. Okay. And I'll pull like those in the center if they get mixed up. Um, I like braided line. Uh, I haven't I had to that. change my my line like in years unless they just break off or something. And so I use this is uh, this is uh, the Vanguard tackle from Pico Lewis who's it. And then I put on the um, the B and M. Usually they're eights and tens. And 12s, you know, like I'll stack them up too, but uh, I also use planer boards. And so, planer boards just help them take them away from the boat further. So, as they spook and go out, so. So, have, uh, uh, you I, run your length of the line that you need for your depth from that uh, point? From this point, yeah. Where that where that connects, that runs back. Like so 55. 80, so 55 feet underneath that. Yeah, or 65 or 80 feet. And then you have so, more line away from the boat. 
yeah, this line goes to the boat. And so I usually run two. I run a Driftmaster's crow foot, mm -hmm. which can hold eight rods, four on each side. So I have two planters on one side, two planters on the other. Okay. Run two lines straight, straight down the middle, middle. middle. And then the two half weights. Or if, that, if they're shallow, like right now, like as of right now, it's real early in the spring, all the fish I was seeing the last couple of days are like 12 foot and less. Right. And I told my neighbor, I was like, he said, I'm not catching. I said, all the fish I'm seeing, 12 foot and less. All the crappie I'm catching, 12 foot and less. And so, but we we know we have to deal with the thermal climb. Yeah. And once that thermal climb comes in, that's where the crappie are going to be above that, yeah. suspended above that. And so it's starting to set in a little bit. Yeah, it's 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 like, like, I you saw can saw see that. Yeah, yeah live scope. Which is really early, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's you go out live scope. What's running with that? It, it is that cloud that's on the bottom, the bottom section, and so you have that. But, um, you know, I, I look at crankbaits as, like, Pico has either deep divers or, uh, or they have square bills. Mm -hmm. And so they have some colors like Wonder Bread, which is an old throwback color. Christmas tree is actually an old throwback color. I mean, this was it's like actually, Christmas tree cake. Mm. Yes, it's, yeah, and if you just drank Howling uh, Dairy Milk, you probably <laughs> want some. This uh, right now is the hottest bait, and this is called the D-Win, W-Y-N-N. And so Doug Wynn actually painted this and Beach Ball, or his two. I've, got, I've seen the Beach Ball. And the Beach Ball is, is a crusher, and then this is a, by Joey M. Uh, my son-in-law made this one. It's called Paycheck. Because if you're using it, it's guaranteed money. No, oh, that looks good. Because you're you're mm -hmm. gonna catch them on that. It's very transparent, and so. Uh, but so on the on the line too, what I do is that like if I have this pole here, I let the amount, I let the rod length of line right. out, and then I reset my counter. Right. And then I send it out because of the, you know the. Right. By the time you move it in, you'll lose some of your That's your right. Line, so. Well, I think like the biggest problem I see with people that have counters is their line has gone way down. You know, they have like half a spool, but your counters really, because I'll get in their boat and their counter, I'll be like, mm, that's like eight inches. That's not a foot. Right. Like there's no way that's a foot. Mm -hmm. And so. You got to be good. So you, just, you guess yours then? No, we count them out. You can, no, you they can't. throw them. They throw them. It's from live scope. When they throw it out, you're like, oh, that's thirty feet. You know, but if you're pulling out, it's one, yeah, two, it's one, three. two, three. Yeah, count them count all. Count all the way to thirty. But most of the time, cast them now, out. Cast when you them catch out, a and fish, that's like around thirty foot, and then okay, there you go like thirty, um, okay. one, thirty two. So it speeds things up. How do you hook that up? When you catch your fish on here, uh. You're, I'm assuming the way this setup is, you're running your line through here, uh -huh. yeah, and then you to clip the it to here for uh -huh. your for your footage. Yeah. So, when you're reeling in a fish, do you have to take this off? Yeah, I take that off. Bef uh, so you take not, it off before they. You're not trying to pop it off no. or anything. You no, know, because I'll get off. Because then it down. slides down and off. Just, just like you know, when they get on, you get their head up. Yeah. You start reeling. You stand right. because if so, you try. Fighting them like it would be a fish. Yeah, yeah they're gone. Yeah. So you, you obviously this is the easier part to unclip, and then you have to unclip this to get your to take it off. Uh huh. Yeah, it only takes a second. Yeah, a lot of practice. Well, I mean, as deep it is. I mean, it depends on how sore. It's pretty big. So what yeah. holds it here? I do have Where does the line go through there? Right here. It just clips it's right here. Yeah. It it and it just has, but it still yeah. it still has movement, or it stays stationary. No, it stays right there. Yeah. And so yeah. those are pads in there. And so for braided line, those pads because there's pads in there, pins. two little pins. And a sore. So you control the depth of your crankbait with that too. How far it's in front of it. Well, how far back the line's from. 
from the back of that. So you come like to, you go through Does it plane. does it actually pull the planer back or is it I think it uh, sometimes it'll shake. I got some with flags, I just grabbed one. This mm -hmm. one's actually pretty good looking. Like usually yeah. they're pretty nasty because they've been in the water as much as I've tried it a time or two, but it just it's just my system works for me, so yeah. I just old school. I mean, it, you think about it, the people that are out here trolling with the pontoon boats, we've talked about this before, yeah, is they'll come by, or they'll come by you as you're trolling, and you look back there, and like 60 feet back, there's this poor crappie. Yeah. <laughs> and like, flopping on top of he's dead, you know, he's been dragging him since yeah. point 12. And you look back, they don't have to look back till they get another beverage out of the cooler. But that's what I like about the way, the way I, I set up is, I mean, you know when that fish is hit, it's mostly. Well, time. you can, yeah, you can feel, like you can see. Oh, the, yeah. You can see the boards. Uh, the, yeah. Yeah, especially if it's a big flathead. You can catch no all catfish too. That's bad. You want to catch catfish, put on crankbaits. Red, what? Pink, pink crankbaits are red. Orange and red. Yeah. Early, early in the year, especially. Yeah. Early like in the year. Like now. Yeah, like right <laughs> now. From now to end of June, first <laughs> of really, July. Because that's where the catfish spawn, I believe. They in June, wear so. that orange crush and red. Red crawl. Yeah, red crawl. Yeah. 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 But I mean, that's, that's the deal. So the good news is, if you want to go out there and catch some on uh, crankbaits, you can. Mm -hmm. And so, Peyton, what's your uh, contact information? Uh, Peyton Nursery Fishing on Facebook or 479-387-6153. Lance, you got over us on uh, Facebook or 479-236-4105. And he'll be the one that's making fun of us that's trolling crankbaits. Because <laughs> too, he's much no, too much work. No, too much work. And Greg's got service. On Facebook or 479-601-1683. Yep, get hold of me at Brad Weekman. You can catch me out on uh, Facebook or call me at 479-756-5279. Like we always like to keep it, our core. Our core. Our core. <laughs>